guys, it's me Luna the Zen Witch here with an unboxing for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to click that button and take a chance. If you like what you see, tell me by hitting the like button and consider subscribing and hitting the bell too so you know immediately when I drop new content. So I'm going to call this um, this installment today when trends collide. <laughs> uh, you know that every generation gets you know wistful about the style of the last generation at a certain point and mid-century modern is all the rage right now as is tarot and witchcraft and astrology and all that stuff well here's a deck where those trends collide and it is <laughs> called the mystical medleys tarot now if you are anywhere close to my age um, or you know maybe even a lot younger you may you certainly would recognize the style but the name mystical medleys is a riff on the merry melodies cartoon series that i think was warner brothers the B bugs bunny you know all that so here we go a vintage cartoon to row mystical medleys just from this front here I know it's going to be banging. Uh, my daughter bought this for me for Mother's Day. We got a Mother's Day do-over since we had COVID on Mother's Day. This is published by Sterling Ethos. So we have these lovely images. Let me zoom you in before I even look at the box here. I wish I could do that in a lovely smooth way, but I can't. All right. So there's that image. Here's the front image, the side, and Body, Mind, Spirit. Um, it says, Gary Hall's Mystical Medleys is a tarot deck inspired by the iconic vintage cartoons of the 1930s. If you love rubber hose animation, then this is the deck for you. I have never heard that term. Hilarious. A truly fresh take on an ancient tradition, mystic, Mystical Medleys, brings lighthearted fun and madcap energy to the tarot. It's ideal for tarot fa fans of all varieties. I need to slow down. Animation and cinema buffs and lovers of all things vintage or mid-century modern. Complete 78 card tarot deck plus two bonus cards with introductory bullet booklet. Sorry, I think current events are infecting my brain. And it's sterling ethos, but this imprint is liminal Liminal 11 or Liminal 2. Same thing, the um, White Newman, I believe it's called, Tarot, also by Sterling Ethos. Um, liminal, I can't tell if it's 11. I think it is 11. And it says Light at the Crossroads here. What I love about this, and this is exactly the same packaging style as that White Newman deck, check this out. So we open a little snappy snap but look what you get when you open you get this adorable fucking baphomet how cute is that all right and then we have a box that pulls out these are all very very sturdy boxes wait ah. so now we have this box that pulls out and you see there's a cardboard insert here so let me try to get um, well, let's dump the deck out I have taken the plastic off so I have to mess with it on camera and then the book is kind of wedged in there but it's because they put this there we go they put this cardboard insert and I do appreciate that of course that gets thrown away oh look <laughs> but I appreciate it because it keeps the cards from smacking around in the box and I was watching somebody unboxing a um, an indie deck that had gilding on it but they were showing where the gilding rubbed off inside the box because the cards rattled around it so I do appreciate that nice secure packaging as we set it aside and we have an actual hardback book check it um, let's look at the introduction Sterling Ethos, the copyright is 2021, so this is a fairly new deck. And, you know, I'm looking for, we don't have on the box the author's name, except on the back where it says Gary Hall. So, um, yes, images and text copyright Gary Hall, so he is also the author as well as the artist. Um, 
introduction. This there's a there's a foreword uh, by someone else talking about Gary Hall, but I like to do the introduction because I want to know, you know, where the author's coming from. Like so many good stories, it all started with the devil. I've always been fascinated by magic, the occult, and the imagery of the tarot. I own several decks, from fully usable traditional ones to more modern artistic ones, and have always dreamed of creating my own in some way. One of my other big passions is animation. I studied animation at university and in my long varied art career I've often worked as an animator. One particular project was actually with the mighty Disney company itself, but that's a story for another day. I'm fond of many eras of animation, but particularly the vintage rubber hose cartoons of the 1920s and 30s. I mean, if you think about those cartoons, particularly the black and white ones where everybody was all, you know, so yeah, rubber hose, it's great. Um, I've been drawing my own occult and gothic cartoon characters in this style for a long time. So it seemed to be fate that one day the two worlds would come together and this deck would finally be realized. I knew I didn't just want to make an aesthetic good looking deck that was all style and no substance. I wanted it to be veiled in the true deeper meaning of the traditional tarot while paying homage to vintage cartoons and all of their wonderful intricate symbolism. But back to the matter in hand. The devil card is where I began, being someone who's naturally drawn to the dark side of anything. I always root for the bad guy in movies or books, and heavy metal is my go-to music. Pitter-patter. I thought if I could capture that cute vintage look of classic cartoons with the most infamous occult card, then I may well be on to something. So I gave it my best shot, and the response was amazing. That's that bafflement. My version of the devil was well received, and I was lucky enough to garner the interest of the tarot community and ultimately the attention of Darren and Kay from Liminal to 11. <laughs> Thanks to their encouragement, here we are today with my magnum opus in your hands. I want to personally thank you, the person reading this, for choosing this deck, and I hope you get as much enjoyment from it as I did from creating it. Blessed be Gary Hall. Well, blessed be you too, Gary. Um, we have... Uh, very, we dive straight into the cards. So there's not like a history of tarot. Here's how you use it. Here's what it is. Here's what it's not. All that stuff. Just says, roll up, roll up. The major arcana takes center stage as life's big, big moments. The thresholds we must pass, the misfortunes that bring us down, and the triumphs that make us soar. It's the grand journey of consciousness, the self's slow becoming. When these cards pop up in a reading, pay attention. The show's about to start. So each page we get images and then we get uh, meanings. I don't see any categories like upright or reversed. And then when we get to, let's see here, we get a little intro to the minors as well. Um, oh, I just got a preview of the extra cards. Minor arcane, it's not all climactic scenes and grand finales. In between the game-changing events, life happens. And life is what it's all about. The minor arcana take us through the everyday. The lessons we learn, the people who surround us, and the decisions we must make. Every part of life, no matter how small, is part of the grand tapestry, and it can all be found here. So, um, at the end of the book, let's see. Um, so, we do have some spreads at the end. Oh, okay. There's, looks like the uh, miners just have... Um, you know, meanings one after another. There's no images. How to read the tarot, tarot spreads, what's a happening, lights, camera, action, spirit scale. Okay, so we will go to that when it is time for the test drive. But for now, here are the backs of the cards. Nice and rubber hosey, definitely um, reversible. Here we go. <laughs> the fool so we kick off with the fool in his little puffy shoes <laughs> like you know all the good disney um all the dwarves is what i'm thinking of look at the sun the happy face this little pyramid with the all-seeing eye as his head the donkey ears the little hat the little bag he's holding a flower Jester's outfit. There's the dog. So we have included the traditional imagery of the tarot in the Waitsmith deck and just twisted it. I love the pyramid because this brings in the symbolism of the wisdom of the fool. You know, this kind of all-seeing eye, which 
you know, the fool talking about a jester in the king's court, that was kind of the role of the jester is to observe and see everything and be able to bring um, things that no one else could say to the king through comedy and humor, through jesting. So awesome, awesome start. Here's the magician. We see the tools, we see flowers and a vine. We see the roses and the lilies. Look at the little face on the table. Okay, excellent. And the high priestess is a gal. So we have the B and the J and the cow and the moon. <laughs> Awesome. So yes, we are definitely staying true to the symbolism. Um, we don't have a pregnant empress, but we've got the waterfall in the background. You know, everything's got little faces. I am a fan. The emperor. So this is going to be an easy deck to use. Um, a few weeks ago, I did a live stream where I pulled out like all my goofy, silly, wacky decks. Boy, this one will be in the next round. Look at his face. The Hierophant. All right, we're going to go faster now. Again, though, this all-seeing eye. So he's bringing in his own symbolism that really um, adds to the picture. And instead of, like, the supplicants in front, we've got these little bugs. And that, to me, brings a layer of, you know, the Hierophant, that hierarchy of authority um, spiritually in the church and that the, you know, the people down below are the little bugs to be crushed under their feet. Symbols on their shells or their <clears throat> backs. The lovers. We've got like an Adam and Evie thing. Absolutely. Look at the Cupid. Oh my God. The chariot with cats. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, even down to the symbols on the front of the chariot. Um, I am almost at the end of Rachel Pollock's book, um, 78 Degrees of Wisdom. And is that what it's called? Yes. And um, so I'm very aware of all of the things in every image. And boy, he's hitting it out of the park with that. Here's the strength card. <laughs> you know, the lemniscate above the head. It's all there. Here's the hermit. Hey! Wheel of Fortune. So, do we have, so what I don't really have here is, I mean, is that a, like a lion's paw? We don't really have the representations of the four fixed signs. So that's one place. At any rate, justice. No blindfold. Hanged man. They're a little stiff. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to, to shuffling because they do feel a little stiff. Here's the death card. Temperance. Tripping on the water. There's our Baphomet. So well done. Adorable. Here's the tower. The star. Those Mickey Mouse gloves, you know. It's awesome. The moon. <laughs> He's looking very cheesy. Green cheese. God, when I was a kid, yeah, the moon is made of green cheese. Those jokes were still going until they actually landed on the moon. There's, whoops. The moon, the sun. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm really thinking these are going to be a bitch to shuffle, unfortunately. So we've got a little flaming head with a diaper. Look at the shoes on the horse. God, judgment. The world. Then we go to the Ace of Wands. Funny, it's like a little dark cloud, like a witch in a dark cloud, but the broom here clearly is the wand, and we've got oak leaves. Here's the two, the three. Again, really including all of the major symbolism. Here's the four, the five. And, you know, you can do that when you're not completely reimagining, like, the structure of it or things like that. You're just um, reinterpreting the art style. 
five of wands. Look at a bat in every hand. Here's the six. Victory. The seven. <laughs> I love that the wands are witches. The nine. Look at the arrow. The ten. I'll be interested to see if he mentions um, these little additions that he's made. Here's the page. The knight. On fire. The queen and the king. So we really do see kind of in the night here and in the page in the night where the wands are flaming. Did I notice that on other ones? No, I didn't see flaming wands before, but that's where we really do acknowledge that we're sticking with uh, wands or fire in this deck. And now the cups with a ghost. That's awesome. Look at the lion in the sky. So usually you see that lion head and the angel wings and oh, excellent with a snake too. Hmm. The three of cups, we have dancing skeletons for rawr. And the five is a, yep, that black cloak, six. <laughs> I mean, he's pulling from a lot of resources. You can tell when artists have just spent a lot of time absorbing, absorbing a lexicon or a vocabulary of image. And this one, I mean, he's hitting it out of the park with every image as far as absolutely consistent style. Um, there's the happy family card, the page, the knight. The queen as a mermaid and the king as a pirate. Now we have the swords. So again, we've got that little, um, you know, the witch, the ace of wands had that kind of dark cloud when I was thinking, are they going to go with wands as air? Um, but we've got that little dark cloud with both the ace of wands and the ace of swords. Here's the two, the three. Interesting, two arrows are piercing and the heart itself is shooting the third arrow. Let's spread around the heartache, huh? Here's the four <laughs> with the, you know, um, anthropomorphized, I guess, casket. It's amazing because everything in those cartoons, you know, the things were, everything had a face and, you know, and also when, when people would be standing still, they'd do this. They just, just do this kind of bounce thing to, to remind people that this is actually moving. <laughs> Here's the five. That looks like Jack and the Beanstalk. But think about the abuse of power vibe that the five of swords has or the win or lose. And obviously someone so much larger. Interesting. There's the six and the seven. Shh, I'm stealing. The eight. Ah, a blindfold. Yes. Ooh, wait. I want to see. Yes. Okay. So the two of swords has a blindfold and there we've got a Disney um, reference of Alice in Wonderland. How did I just go by that? There's the nine. Yep. The 10 with the X's for eyes. There's the page. The knight. Waha. Angry looking. The queen holding a baby, interesting, and the king. Then we've got the Ace of Pentacles. Again, we've got the little cloud. So the cups don't have the little cloud. The wands have the witch, right? Um, okay, the wands have the little cloud as a witch. The swords have the little cloud as he's kind of wounded in battle with a crown. And then the pentacles have the little cloud and the cups do not. Interesting. Okay, base two, two headed. <laughs> that's, that's a really interesting image. The three consistent. There's that pyramid again. The four, that's very consistent. Five, as is that. Six, seven, The eight, the pyramid again, the nine, and the ten. And here's the page, the knight, the queen, 
and the king. And then we have Happy Squirrel with a sun. Happy Squirrel, he got a nut. <laughs> and then the Sad Squirrel with a thundercloud and a wand. It looks like he going after somebody. Oh my God. All right, let me light my charcoal. What did I do with the fire? Ah, where's my fire? There it is. All right. Let's uh, welcome guides and guardians, allies and ancestors. Thank you so much for being here with me. Let me uh, bring you back in. So, all my guides, thank you so much for being here in this um, personally trying time. And thank you for being back on the channel with me. Let's see how this shuffles. Not really looking forward to it. It's pretty, pretty chunchy. Yeah, they're kind of stiff. I mean, they, they actually do shuffle, though. But as far as bending it the other way to... Um, do the riffle at the end, it, it isn't going to work. Or to do the bridge, I think they call it. We'll do this a couple more times. I mean, the cardstock has, it's, it's matte, as you can see, you know, not glossy. Um, oh, dear. <gasps> oh, d look, look what happened, you guys. Wait, I'm flipping out. Was that like that before? How did I not notice that I'm looking at, oh no, okay, flipped me out. And this shows you how much when I focus on something, I miss other things. Can you see there's like a very subtle line going across there? And that's because the borders on them have this kind of smudgy look. Flipped me out. I shuffled it and then looked and I thought that one shuffle had like smeared all the ink. So... All right, I'm not freaking out anymore. Jeez Louise. <laughs> okay, one more of that. And then we shan't shuffle them that way anymore because it's no fun. And just shuffling them that, like that, like one way, look at the bend. Hmm. So right right away, I'm not thrilled with the card stock. Um, I think I can straighten them back out again. And I don't remember with the with the White Newman deck, but you know Sterling Ethos is one of those publishers that doesn't do exclusively tarot decks, and you know they, it's like a random deck now and then comes out of them. So they don't um, maybe they don't know how we use them as much as some of the other publishers. They're hard to cut shuffle too. This might be a deck that I need to do fanning powder with because it just doesn't seem to be they they come off in clumps so the matteness of them makes them sort of stick together I'm gonna do uh, when I read with these I'm going to do a cut and pull and I offer fresh water to my guides and guardians allies and ancestors I offer the fire of Azrael to you and to this deck and to my guides and guardians I add, offer some salt water all right Let's look back to the book and see what uh, readings they, what spreads they recommend. Um, so the last thing says there's really no wrong way to read and many, many right ways. Good. That's what we'll go with. So there's Tarot Spreads Quick on the Draw. That's a one card. What's a happening is a three card. Lights, camera, action. Let's see. Wait, three cards. Um first card what might be weighing you down second advises you how to lift that weight and the third points out what may be the hardest for you to see this lights camera action is um, card one represents you and the role you will play on life's great stage card two the director is someone who will help guide you along the way um, is this someone you recognize or someone you haven't met yet Card three is your script, something to refer back to when you can't quite remember your line. Card four is the studio, the outside influence that will try to dictate how you live your life. And five is your claim to fame. What will you become known for? Hmm. Um, not so sure about that. Spirit scale, we've got seven cards. You know what? Here's where I go off book, <laughs> literally. And um, 
let's just let's start with the three and see where we go from there. And I will refer to this this three card spread. Okay. Let me in, please. What do we need to know right now? We will reference the three card spread, but we will also just go off book. There's the first one that wants us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll take you two. And you flipped over, so we'll take you two. All right. Oh, we have two here. Okay, interesting. An ace and two tens, very interesting. And you know, of course, I mean, it's been a while since I've done an unboxing, but my standard question is, please tell us how we go from mere survival into uh, a sense of thriving. All right, so right off the bat, just intuitively, when I've got an ace and two tens, this talks about a new beginning coming on the heels of the ending. Ten of Cups says things are culminating in the material and the emotional. And we have a new emotional beginning starting. And then we have the Six of Cups as well. So lots of cups here. Um, all right. If we do it according to the spread, card one um, reveals what might be weighing us down and that would be the Ace of Cups. Okay, Ace of Cups, it's the start of a new life. Something wonderful has begun and this cheerful cleansing cup is your vessel. Keep it ever flowing with positivity and joy. Find a balance and harmony that fills your soul. So there are no reverse meanings here. I don't know that he talks about reverses. Let's see, right quick. Um, Card's meaning. After that, I best start reading. Uh, do the shuffle. Cut the deck. Voila, ready to read as you lay the cards out. Pay attention to how they relate to each other. Repeating suits or themes. He does not mention reverses. And there's no um, reverse meaning, at least for the minors. So it's difficult then to place meaning, to fit the meaning of the Ace of Cups as given to the category that says this is what's weighing you down. It could be just emotions are weighing me down. It could be the effort of trying to make a new start emotionally is weighing me down. It, you know, if we look at the Aces as just the symbol of the emotions themselves, um, you know, that just that straight elemental energy, then it would say what's weighing us down is emotion. We are weighed down by our emotion. <sighs> Go figure. The second card advises you how to lift that weight, and we have the Ten of Pentacles here. Hmm. So we lift that weight. Ten wait, that's swords. Sorry. Pentacles. No man is an island, and we cannot truly create in isolation. Communities must come together and coexist to find fulfillment. Your amazing actions were built on the solid foundations of your forefathers. Your home and family is full of love and life. Um, so how do we lift, our, lift that weight? Through community. How do we lift the emotional weight? By talking to someone about it. By being in community with someone. By, you know, not being isolated and alone. And the third card is the, the hardest thing to see. And we're back to the cups, the Ten of Cups. You may ask yourself, who, <laughs> whose is this beautiful house? And you may ask yourself, where is that beautiful house? <laughs> it's been a struggle to get here, but this is the fulfillment of lifelong high-flying dreams. You've cultivated your passions, and in the end, it's a beautiful day. So the thing that we are... What was this category again? Oh, God, my memory's so bad, you guys. So bad. Um, something you're doing right. What might be the hardest for us to see something we're doing right. Um, we've been working to fulfill our dreams. 
um, cultivate our passions. And so what we might find hardest right now, as we are weighed down just by raw emotion itself, we might find it hardest to see the joy that we have built, you know, the successes in our lives, the joy that we've built around us, um, the people that we love. And interesting when we have the ace and the ten, one cup, many cups. What might be weighing us down is this sense of emotional isolation, a sense of I'm the only one that feels this way. And so the remedy is to be in community and looking at this as just um, sharing physical space with people, eating food together, all of those pentacles, physical things. And then what we need to see is that there still is joy uh, there is joy together when we get together and, and share emotions. And let's see the six that came out. You're feeling nicely nostalgic. Is there something from your childhood you want to take a closer look at? As an adult looking back to those halcyon days, you can use these feelings of child care fan childlike fantasy and love to build a better future and expand your horizons. Let's, let's go for a, a major here. I would like a major arcana, please. What... Um, what of these archetypal energies can we concentrate on? No, nope, that's not one. Major, major, please. Okay, and that was the five of cups, so just lots of cups coming out today. And, you know, considering I'm doing a cut and pull, um, regardless of the shuffle, it's interesting that it's a lot of cups. So, you know, the overarching message here, how do we go from merely surviving into thriving is we pay attention to our feelings. We take care of our emotions. We feel them. And I want to tell you this, in case you didn't know, just because an emotion hurts doesn't mean it's harmful to you. The release of hurtful emotions, the release of grief, the release of anger, you know, is what heals emotional energy is represented by water water must move to be healthy when it goes still and unmoving and it's not oxygenated it gets stagnant and infected so here we go the justice card is our major talking about balance gaze upon justice full of life's energy posing passionately and proudly between the looming columns of tolerance and indifference hmm with all of her eyes open, she uses, with all of her eyes open. Okay, so we've got her two physical eyes and there's an eye in her crown too. She uses intuition and contemplates everybody's needs with careful consideration. She weighs things up, raising her sword, and with a clear conscience brings judgment. Wise judgment relies upon the goodness of the heart, so be fair in every encounter you experience and don't be quick to judge. Don't be afraid to criticize or to praise. The more time we take to investigate, the more compassionate our judgment will be. So, okay, so we need to have our eyes open. We need to um, look at balance. We need to, um, I love the columns, tolerance and indifference. So these are two questions that justice grapples with. Um, what is tolerable? What will we allow to happen in our culture, in our society? And then indifference is, you know, maybe the flip side of the tolerance uh, coin. Tolerance is more dynamic. Yes, I will allow that. Indifference is, I don't care what you do. So these are the things that justice must struggle against and keep her eyes open so she can see everything clearly and then make decisions um, to restore order. All right. So the emotional um, weight that we're under, we need to address through community, through letting our feelings flow, and through, you know, the question of justice and what we can do as far as that goes. So, wow, very, very, very interesting deck. If you are a fan of this kind of style, man, this is your deck. I do, again, have a, the, an argument with the cardstock. Not easy to handle. Um, it's a thick old boy. 
Uh, but still, you know, I, I can get around that. There's so many ways to pick cards out of a deck. Um, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this deck. I really did. And if you did, please uh, drop a comment below. Do you have this deck? Have you used it? What are your opinions of it? Um, and uh, just, you know, check in, say hi. I still respond to every comment. <laughs> so connect. I love to hear from you. Um, again, if you found this entertaining, hit the like button so other people know about it too. Subscribe if you haven't before and click the bell so you know when I'm dropping content. Um, I will see you next time. I'll have a live stream coming up every week. Mostly, mostly every week. <laughs> Until then, this is the Zen Witch. Thanks for tuning in. Blessed be.